Founder Space Startup Supercharge. Today, I am going to be speaking about the age of AI and the impact it will have on all of us. We all know that generative AI has experienced an explosion in growth. It's been amazing the number of new companies formed around this technology. We see these companies using generative AI to create images, graphics, even videos, 3D worlds, speech, text, you name it, generative AI is everywhere. It is transforming marketing, it's transforming business development, it's transforming writing, even Hollywood is up in arms over generative AI and the potential it has to replace writers, creative screenwriters. So what does this mean for us, for entrepreneurs? It means opportunity. There are enormous opportunities, but there are opportunities beyond what people are even talking about. Because generative AI won't just be on your web browser and on your phone, it'll be going into all aspects of business and commerce. And let me speak about just a few of these. Generative AI is actually going to empower everyone. It doesn't matter if you're an accountant, if you're a doctor, if you're a lawyer, if you're a government official, whoever you are, whatever job you do, you will have to be working with AI. We call this human AI symbiosis. It means that humans working with artificial intelligence will be much more capable, much faster, and much better at doing their jobs than either humans alone or AI alone. We can see this already. Most people who are really at the top of their profession are the ones adopting AI early. In fact, if you aren't adopting AI early, you are going to be left behind. Let me give you just one example. If you're a graphic artist, that's great. You probably have immense talent at creating artwork, but you have to be using generative AI. If you aren't embracing AI, you are going to be left in the dust. Because let's face it, there are programs out there like Dolly and Midjourney and Stable Diffusion that can literally create artwork in seconds that would take a human artist days, weeks, even months to complete. So what humans need to do is take those tools and begin to use them. And companies like Adobe are on the forefront of combining human talent and artificial intelligence to create a next generation of graphics and videos. And that's just one profession. Same goes for the medical profession. If you're diagnosing patients, if you're interacting with patients, I know doctors now who literally will type in their messages. They will go to chat GPT and type in what, what should I say to a patient that I have diagnosed with this condition? And it will come back with a nice way of saying it. So doctors without good bed bedside manners can actually communicate better to their patients. Lawyers in the whole legal profession is about to be upended by generative AI. Literally, it will be able to spit out contracts. But this doesn't mean that humans won't need to be in the loop. If you get a diagnosis, you're still gonna want a human doctor to review what the AI gives you because the AI isn't perfect. AIs are always, there's always room for error. And what we need is the best of humans and the best of AI. Same with legal contracts. You shouldn't trust an AI on a very important deal you're doing to give you the perfect contract. You will need a human lawyer to go over it, but it will make the human lawyer so much faster because all the basic work can be done by AI and then the human can simply review and modify it. And this, this change is gonna be happening throughout all levels of business. It doesn't matter what job you're in, whether you're on a factory room, you know, assembly line, whether you're a professor at a university, you will be using AI. And those who adopt it early will be ahead of everybody else. So let's talk about some of the areas where AI is gonna have a profound impact and especially new technologies like generative AI. One of them is caring for our elderly. Literally, the world is aging, especially in developed countries like Japan, South Korea, China, Europe. Populations are aging. 
In fact, in some countries like South Korea and Japan, they simply don't have enough young people to take care of the old people. Like there aren't enough people to do these jobs. So they are investing heavily in robotics because they know robots will be their future. And these robots won't only help patients and carry them and put them in beds and make sure they're fed, but they'll also be there to communicate with them. There are lots of people who suffer from debilitating conditions like Alzheimer's disease, but they still want some contact. They want to be able to talk to somebody. They want somebody to listen to them. Humanoid robots are going to be that. They, will, they have done studies where elderly people with cognitive disorders, they've had a stroke, they've had Alzheimer's disease, they, the more they actually interact with a human like AI robot, the more it stimulates their brain and the faster, let's say you're a stroke victim, the faster they can recover. So these tools are very powerful and we're just at the beginning of what's possible. Artificial intelligence and robots will also be taking care of not just our elderly, but also our children. Parents today are extremely busy. Husbands, wives, they have jobs, professions. What can they do? How do they take care of the kids? And if the grandparents aren't around or somebody else isn't around, who do they trust to take care of their kids? Well, right now you have to send them out to daycare or hire a nanny, very expensive. And you don't know if you can trust these people. What we're going to see in the future is bringing AI and robots in to look after and care for our children. And it may sound strange today that we will be relying on robots, but soon it'll become as common as using a cell phone. It, everybody will be using robots to raise their kids simply because it will work. It'll be so beneficial to families. And it's beneficial because the robots, they can pick up the kids, they can make sure that they are taken by an autonomous car, either to school or to their piano lessons or soccer practice. They can also care for the kids, feed the kids, and protect the kids, watch the kids to make sure they don't get in trouble. And if there's any problem, they can alert the parents. Even more profound is the role AI will play in our education system. So today, we teach in a primitive manner. We have the one-to-many educational model. It's like an assembly line. And it's literally been this way for, you know, close to 200 years. We've taught the same way. Kids come into a classroom, there's one teacher, and the teacher teaches the same lessons, gives the same homework, and works in the same way with the entire class. Because the one teacher can't customize the lesson for every student. But we know children are different. Some kids learn very fast. Other kids learn much slower. Some kids know certain things and, other, and don't know other things. Certain children have learning disabilities and need special attention and special instruction. A single teacher cannot do this. It's impossible. However, an AI can. An AI can provide individual teaching to every student, maximizing their potential. So if your, your son or daughter is a fast learner and moving very quickly, they aren't held back by the class. They aren't bored. They can proceed at their own pace and they can explore subjects that are most interesting to them. And if the child has a disability like dyslexia or ADD, that child can get special care from the AI, adapted teaching, so that they too can learn at a much faster pace and a much deeper level. This has the potential to totally transform education, but it won't happen until our society is ready for it, until we say, okay, it's okay to bring AI into the classroom. This is actually beneficial. I am looking forward to this day. Robotics and construction. We are seeing AI transforming construction. So everything about construction, from ordering the materials, to assembling buildings, to uh, instructing the actual humans on the construction site. So if you're a construction worker, a blue collar worker, in the future, you are gonna have to be able to work with AI because that AI will bring costs way down for construction and speed construction up further. Robots can work day and night. 
They never get tired. They never get sick. But also, they do things this, they can do things perfectly. Once they're taught to do it, they can do it over and over and over without making errors like human beings. Their downside is that robots are not that versatile. They are, they tend to, they tend to be hard to reprogram. However, with generative AI, robots will be able to learn. They will be able to adapt and they will be able to uh, interact like humans on the construction site with people to actually work in concert more effectively. It's going to transform how we build everything from buildings to ships to cars. It's coming. Businesses without workers. The future of factories is simply not to have workers. We call these lights out factories. Literally, robots run the place. And with generative AI, these robots are getting smarter and smarter. They're able to repair themselves. They're able to sense when the, something is going to break and order a replacement part before it breaks. They're able to interact with humans. Like literally, they have AI on assembly lines in factories watching humans and telling the humans if they made a mistake and having them fix it using video cameras to uh, observe and analyze human behavior. The AI and humans, this AI-human symbiosis will make the human workers in the factories more efficient. It will also make the robots more efficient and work and collaborate better with the humans. And at some point, we simply won't need people in the loop. Robotics on farms. Agriculture is already going through a huge transformation with robotics and AI. You know, at Harper Adams University, they did an experiment. They, they developed a farm where it was completely automated with robots from planting the seeds to harvesting the crop. Everything automated. They now in California are using robots across all of agriculture. You know, whether they're growing grapes, whether they're growing berries, whether they're growing tomatoes, it doesn't matter. Robots are there harvesting, processing, doing all aspects, monitoring the soil, monitoring the rainfall, uh, working, uh, coordinating the irrigation. All of these things is done by AI and robots. And it will only get more because our machines are becoming more sophisticated. They now have robots that literally can pick a delicate fruit, like a blackberry or a blueberry, can pick those, harvest them without damaging the fruit. You know, that's hard for even humans to do, let alone a robot, but they have robots that can do it. And the robots are getting smarter because they're all networked together. They're all speaking to each other. They're all operating off big data from weather satellites and everything else. So they can operate in an optimal way. And in California right now, uh, we are having a labor shortage. We literally don't have enough humans that want to work on farms because it's brutal work. It's really hot. It's, it, you know, it's hard work. It hurts your back. So most people, if they can avoid it, will avoid it. So we need robots and robots are coming and they will be the future of farming. Robots on Mars. This is another area where we are going to see a massive transformation. Elon Musk, he loves to talk and he says he wants a million people on Mars and to do, you know, make it another colony for Earth and all this stuff. But reality is very different. Mars is still an extremely hostile environment. Most people, and I would say almost everybody who's sane, would not want to live on Mars, especially in its current condition. So for the near future, and even for the next 100 years or so, the main colonizers of Mars and potentially other planets are going to be robots because they can be designed to adapt to these harsh conditions. They don't mind. They can be programmed intelligently to transform Mars and other planets, even the moon, into places that are productive for us, that don't aren't just money sinks, but actually generate money. They can harvest rare minerals, materials. They can take ice and actually uh, mine ice and convert it into hydrogen that they can use for power. So we are going to see for every human we send to the moon or Mars, we are going to be sending hundreds of thousands of robots, AI powered robots in the future. They are going to be the real colonizers of these planets. AI created content. AI created content has exploded, right? It's amazing. If you go on Midjourney or any of these other applications, what you can do with AI is mind boggling. Like in seconds, you could do work that would take artists, 
you know, weeks or even months to produce. And you can do it just by typing in commands and you don't have to have any art skills. There are still areas where humans are needed because right now when you generate AI content, it's very hard to edit. It's really hard to edit. It doesn't have layers. Like normal graphic artists, if you hire a human uh, artist, they will create a layered artwork that is easy to separate and edit. They also can take instruction really well modifying, but trying to modify a piece of artwork through chat prompts, it's a, it's a dull tool. It's really difficult to get exactly what you want. So we're really gonna see humans working with AI to get the best results. It's not gonna replace human artists. It's not gonna replace human filmmakers and video makers, but it will enhance them. And there are people in Hollywood who kind of don't get this. They're on strike now, writers, afraid that AI is gonna take their jobs, but it's not going to. It's going to be a tool that allows them to be far more productive than they ever were before. And yes, some people will lose jobs because whenever technology advances and people are more productive, they need less people to do those jobs. However, they will create more jobs. We are gonna be able to create more content, richer content, the bar will go up and up. What we expect today and what we'll expect tomorrow, higher and higher quality, which means we will have different ways of creating this content and much richer content. You know, we're moving into a world, the metaverse and all this content that populates the metaverse will be created by a combination of AI and human beings. One of the exciting areas that is about to explode is text to video. Literally, right now, you can type in keywords, prompts, and literally have AI create a video for you. Now, the video isn't very good. It's very primitive. It's not that compelling, but it will get there. You know, if you followed Mid Journey and how it progressed, at the beginning, it was very crude. Just a, a you know, a couple of years ago, it was really crude. And in the past two years, it went boom to incredible quality. We're going to see the same trajectory happen with text to video. And, and this is going to transform how we make videos. Literally, I will be able to type in something and have an image of me appear talking just like I am now. And you watching the video wouldn't know it's, you wouldn't know if it's me who's talking or an avatar of me that just sounds and acts just like me and was created by generative AI. Generative AI world. This is an area I'm fascinated with. The metaverse isn't here yet. It isn't compelling, but it is coming and what's going to power it is AI. And these will be dynamic, progressively generated virtual spaces and virtual worlds. They will, we will literally, through AI, just like you can type into chat GPT and say, write me you know, a, a blog article about this. You will be able to say, I want to, you to create me a future sci-fi world that is populated by androids and aliens and I wanna be able to walk through it. And literally, it'll generate that for you. And then it won't just generate the world, it'll generate characters that populate the world, human-like characters, but that are actually powered by AI so that you will be able to interact with them and you won't be able to tell the difference. You won't be able to tell what's a human avatar and what's an AI powered avatar. It's going to be very rich and the gameplay mechanics will be generated by AI, storylines will be generated by AI. These virtual worlds will be like living and walking and breathing inside a movie. Like you are a character in your own favorite movie. So if you love Harry Potter or you love a science fiction movie, you can literally be the star of your movie. And so it's this emerging of storytelling and games and virtual spaces and, and AI generated intelligence all together to create new forms of entertainment that we haven't experienced yet. Autonomous AI agents. If there's one thing you take away from my talk today, it's this. We are on the cusp of creating intelligent AI agents, and we already have primitive versions of these. They're out right now, but we will, they will get exponentially more sophisticated that can literally com accomplish tasks for us, complex tasks. It won't just be like going to chat GPT and saying, you know, I want to know about this or asking it a question about something else. You know, you know, can you help me plan my next vacation? Well, chat GTP can list out ideas for your next vacation and even steps you need to go through to plan for it, but it's not gonna do it for you. 
That will change very shortly. Literally, OpenAI and Google are working on this technology right now. Literally, you will have an intelligent agent living with you, like living in your digital domain, whether it's on your phone, or on the internet, on a computer, it'll be everywhere with you. This intelligent agent powered by AI that will start to learn your preferences. So when you say, I'm gonna be traveling on a business trip to Tokyo, plan out my trip, that intelligent agent will be able to do several things. First of all, it'll know what you like to spend. What is your budget? So it'll book a plane flight for you. What times do you like to travel? It'll know that. It'll know your schedule, when you need to be there, who you need to meet with, who you should be meeting with that you might not even know. So it'll schedule all the meetings. It'll reserve the flight. It'll book a hotel at a hotel you like. It'll make let you know which restaurants you should be going to. And it will do all of this without your input. If you want it to, you can let it run totally autonomously. It'll communicate with all the other systems out there, pay for it, do everything on your behalf. And all you have to do is give it general direction. These autonomous agents are going to be everywhere, not just helping me travel, but they will help us run our lives. They will help us run our businesses. Literally, we will be going to AI and saying, take over this manufacturing of this product. You know how to do it. Figure out how to get this product to this location at this time in this quantity, and the AI will just do it. It'll be able to do it. And people, entrepreneurs out there are gonna be developing these AI apps, these very sophisticated apps that will be doing this for us in the future. They will be not only doing what we request, but they will be smart enough to predict what we need before we know it. So if we're running a business and we need extra parts for something, we're missing that, or we need to schedule something, the AI will know that and do it proactively without us telling it. If we in our daily lives need things, the AI will be watching out for us and helping us. You know, whether it's it's managing our money portfolios, whether it's managing our children, whether it's making mortgage payments, whether it's, you know, thinking of a career change. The AI will be out there looking at possible jobs for us, talking to other AIs, gathering data, and if it finds a better job for us, it'll let us know. <laughs> Maybe you should consider switching to this job. I, it's a really good move in your career path. Everything from, from managing how we work to how we relate to each other, to the friends we get together with, to who we date, to who we marry, we will become more and more reliant on AI. And the interesting thing is, and it's a little bit scary, is that in this process of relying more and more on AI, we will be delegating our decisions to artificial intelligence. We will literally be stepping back and saying, I don't need to make these decisions because the AI is gonna do a better job. The AI is gonna tell me what job I should do next. The AI is gonna tell me what I should be prioritizing on my job. The AI is gonna be recommending people I should be friends with, people I should do business with, people I should potentially marry. The AI is gonna be looking out for all of these things. And pe people might say today, I would never rely on an AI for those, per those things. I wouldn't do it. Well, I will tell you. You will do it. You will do it because the AI is so good at it. Like, why would you do a, a much poorer job when the AI could do a much better job than you could ever do at finding you business partners, about planning your next trip, about doing every little thing you need to do that you can delegate to AI? If the AI is better, we will use it. And those people who don't, honestly, they'll be left behind. It's like, do you know anybody today who doesn't go out without their cell phone who says, no, I don't want a cell phone? Well, there are a few people who do this, but they tend to be on the fringes of society because they can't operate in society productively without using these tools. And that's where we're headed with AI. So we have to think as a society, how much of our, our uh, decision-making process do we delegate to these machines? Is this a good thing? Is it a bad thing? What does this mean for our future as human beings? Are we gonna become dumbed down terminals where the AI is doing all the hard decision making and we're just following instructions? Is that the future of being human? Or are these machines gonna make us so much better, so much more productive and so much more effective at achieving our goals? Curious AI, MIT and other universities are now developing AI that has a curiosity. AI that loves to learn. So AI can actually go out into the world and start to figure things out for itself without us prompting it. 
So the future of these robots and artificial intelligence is we're going to build them and we're going to put them into the world and they're going to start to do things we didn't expect. They're going to start to solve problems that we didn't even ask them to solve. So we're going to give them general instructions. Like we may have a house robot and said, I want to make this house more comfortable to live in. And the house robot will start to learn our preferences. We'll start to figure out problems. They may repaint walls with us asking. They may go out and buy plants, order plants, and plant them in the backyard that they know we will love. They may do all sorts of things without us prompting them. And every time the AI learns to do something, it will then transmit that to other AIs so that they can work in concert to make our lives better. So this is a fascinating thing. We are literally going to have AIs that learn much like children learn. Like they have a lot of capabilities built into them, just like a child does when they're born, but then they can also observe the world, how it functions, and infer from that what it should be doing next and how it should be doing it. After that comes evolutionary robotics. And evolutionary robotics is AI that can not only learn, but AI that can modify itself. Literally, like if you're a robot and you want to uh, plant something in the backyard, but you don't have the right uh, appendages to do that, you will actually go out and order those appendages online, deliver them, attach them to yourself. This is the robot attaching its, uh, a shovel to its arm and go out and be able to dig a hole and plant a tree, right? Because it knew its goal was to plant a tree. It didn't have the right tool. It wasn't constructed in the right way to do it. So it literally modified itself. This is evolutionary robots. They will evolve in different ways with different hardware configurations and software to meet the challenges they're presented. And as soon as a robot figures out a better way to dig a hole or a better way to patch a roof, it will transmit, it will know that data and that could be transmitted to all the other robots in its network. So literally, unlike human beings, like a baby, like if I give birth to a baby today, it takes that baby 18 years just to graduate high school, just to learn what a high school student knows, not even college. Robots can learn all the information that's out there in seconds, literally transmitted through the network. Every time one robot, even halfway around the world, learns a technique or product or something to do, all the other robots in its network could share that information. That is exponential learning. It's going to vastly transform our world. Like AI teaching itself and AI also going to the next level, AI rewriting its own code, literally, AI evolving by rewriting its own code better and faster than humans at the speed of computers in nanoseconds, continually iterating on its code, both hardware and software. And that is when AI will accelerate way past human beings. So what are we going to get? We're going to get a world where soon enough, we will have humanoid robots, robots that we cannot distinguish from humans. Now, this uh, is... Hiroshi Ishiguro, he's, uh, he runs a lab in Japan that develops humanoid robots. And this is a robot of himself. That's him. Can you tell which one is the real Hiroshi? Well, you probably can if you look closely. But in 10 years, we are going to have robots walk into a room and they're going to start talking. And it will be almost impossible to distinguish them from a real human being. We simply won't be able to do them. Do it. Unless maybe we go up and touch the robot or we spend a lot of time with it. We will then know that it's a robot. It's not human. But these robots are going to be our companions. They're going to be living with us. They're going to be talking to us. They're going to, when we're lonely, they're going to be comforting us. Robots are going to be everywhere in our lives. Some of them will be look like us. Others of them will look like computers, IoT devices you know, you know, imaginary characters that can look like anything, but they're coming and they will be specialized and they will be intelligent and they will transform how we live our lives. And some philosophers out there are really worried. They're thinking we're going to want to spend more time with these robots than other people as our coworkers, as our spouses, as our lovers, because the robots will accommodate us. They'll do everything we want them to do. They will accomplish our goals. They won't talk back. They won't argue. The problem with this is if we get used to it, all we're going to want to do is spend time with robots and not people. And that's another deep societal question we have to ask ourselves. I want to wrap this up with asking one fundamental question. Will AI become conscious? 
everybody wonders. Like, there's many different theories. Like, can AI be conscious? Some people think that software can actually become conscious. Other people believe it can't be software. It has to be software coupled with hardware. There has to be a physical part to be conscious. And then there are those who believe it could never be conscious. Well, I today am going to give you the answer. I'm going to tell you the answer to this question. Will AI be conscious? And the answer is, we will never know. We can only speculate. You know why? Because we are humans. We are biological organisms. We are not made of silicon and metal and other materials that our robots and AI are made of. We, we are not them. So we will never be able to see into their minds to really know if they are conscious in the same way we are conscious. But I can tell you with near certainty that they will act exactly like they are conscious. We will not be able to distinguish their behaviors from the behavior of a conscious human being. They will mimic us perfectly. So we literally will wind up treating them as if they are conscious, as if they think the way we do. Although I can tell you, they will never think exactly like us. They will not think exactly like us because they are not made of the same materials. They cannot replicate our biology without actually becoming biological beings. So there will be this gulf between us and robots, but that gulf may be narrowing because they are now developing chips and other materials that are a combination of silicon and, and metals and things like that and rare earth minerals, combination of those and biological cells. They are doing that. So there may be emerging, and we may also be using brain-computer interfaces where literally we are becoming more like machines and tapping into the machines. So even though we will merge, there will always be this gulf because could we ever, ever know if an AI has emotions, can experience love in the way we experience, can experience fear in the way we experience fear. We can never know that. And so we will just have to assume that the AIs of the future do behave like us, but we need to be careful because this assumption can get us in trouble because AI will fundamentally have its own way of viewing the world and its own actions. And at a certain point, it will be independent of us. Right now, we can control AI to a certain degree. We can program it. It's a black box, but we still have control. There will be a point where we lose that control and then all bets are off. How will the world develop? What will happen? Will the AI be a blessing to humanity and literally protect us from ourselves? Like human beings are pretty violent, crazy creatures, right? Will AI shield us from destroying this planet, from climate change, from all these things? And, and and actually solve these problems for us, like acting like a caring parent? Or will AI control us, completely control and dominate us and potentially wipe us out? Nobody knows. It's going to be a wild ride and we're all on this roller coaster together. So buckle up and we'll see what happens. I'm Captain Hoff, CEO of Founderspace, the leading global startup accelerator. I'm also author of the award-winning books, Make Elephants Fly, Surviving a Startup, and The Five Horses.